what would you say the key aspect of addiction is? Time inconsistency. Time inconsistency. Why do you say it has anything to do with time inconsistency? Because usually it's just uh, supposed that they, when you have to get addicted, you'll become another person. And why do you need to go to that? Why can't we do addiction within like the standard model? What's, what facts about the world would not be explicable with the standard consumption model. So let's think about addiction from the point of view of neoclassical economics and how we would approach addiction. Yeah? Do we subtract any elements from consumption behavior and then just stress the consumption of behavior? Okay. For bad, usually. Uh, is there quantity? So, so food is addictive because if you, you need your food every day. Would you say food is addictive in that regard? Would you say heat is addictive and if I live in a cold environment, I'll freeze to death if I don't have it, so I pretty well, addictive, but, we're <laughs> but, but is that what we mean by addiction? Is that really like you said, well, an addictive good is a good I really have to have. That's not really what we mean by addiction, right? Because you really want to even define, yeah. Yeah, I think addiction, I, I agree with you. I think that's the where I would start with addiction. I would start with addiction as something that says we're well, past mat past consumption matters for my consumption decisions today. That how much I've consumed in this good in the past um, feeds into consumption today. So the model that Gary and I did was we said, well, think about there being a stock of of consumption, past consumption, and that stock of consumption is just your standard that is my, my stock that I have is just whatever the stock was yesterday, well we can, let me just do it this way, let me do it that way, I'll lag it to make it a little easier. So the stock I start today with is the stock I started yesterday depreciated plus whatever I consumed last period. And if you want to make the simple model, simple model would be delta equals one, in which case this is just lag consumption. It's just, and then we think about maximize sum, like discounted sum, sum from t equals zero to infinity, e to the, oh, one over one plus all rho the t, u of c of t, s of t. So think about that. That's just a standard discounted utility model, time separable utility. And this utility at a given point in time depends on the stock of past consumption. Okay? And the idea of addiction, at least at a minimum, you might think of UCS as positive. Right? That is, the more I've consumed in the past, the higher the margin utility of consumption is today. Some idea of reinforcement. Okay? That, that the, the utility I get from consuming today is, of the good is a function of past consumption. Okay? That's the simplest, simplest idea. Now, it turns out that's not sufficient to actually lead to anything that we would normally call addictive behavior. So let's say you thought about the following model. So first, think about, think about what's key in this model. Think about UC. UC is the margin utility of current consumption. Usually we're going to think that that's positive. What about US? Is US positive or negative? How would you think about it? The partial derivative of utility today with respect to past consumption? Negative? Always? Can you think of an addictive good for which this might be positive? Exercise? That if I exercised more in the past, raises my demand to exercise today, so maybe the cost of exercising today is lower, and I'm better off if I exercise. So the US less than zero, we call this a harmful addiction. 
and u s greater than zero beneficial use. And this is defined not by, this is not about its effect on future consumption. It's really just about its effect on future utility. These are what we think of as level effects. This is the effect of, of past consumption on today's level of utility. So, uh, you know, if this is heroin consumption, C is heroin consumption, then you might say, well, U.S. is negative. If I've been consuming a lot of heroin, I'm going to be in worse shape today than if I hadn't been. If this is exercise or this is, you know, past consumption of music or something like that, I might be in better shape the more I've consumed this good in the past. And so, but it turns out addiction doesn't have much to do with this, sign of this. That is, the sign of this term isn't really about addiction because in general in economics what really matters in a model like this is the cross derivatives, right? That is how marginal utilities are affected. But what is the marginal utility of a consumption in a model like this? Does anybody know? What would be the marginal utility of consuming a unit of C in a world like this? How, what, what would be the effect of an extra unit of consumption today on your discounted lifetime utility? Well, what would you get? Well, you'd get 1 over 1 plus rho to the t, u sub c evaluated at t, right? That is, if I consumed an extra unit of the good, I would get that amount, right? What would that be it? No. I would start 1 over 1 plus rho to the t plus 1, us, right? Because my s would be one unit higher next period. I consume a unit of the good today. That increases my stock next period by 1. Then it would be 1 over 1 plus rho to the t plus 2. Now there would be a 1 minus delta because that some of that extra consumption would depreciate away. U.S. This would be at T plus 1. This would be at T plus 2 plus dot, 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 right? Where these terms would all be getting smaller because they would all be multiplied by a 1 minus delta over 1 plus rho. Right? All right, everybody see that? So now how would a higher S, well, how would a higher S affect this margin utility? How would S entering affect this margin utility? Yeah. Okay. So it would lower, well, how do we know? No, this is your now you're talking levels, right? You're saying, what's the level of this? So a harmful addiction, these terms are going to be negative, right? Right. So a harmful addiction is going to be defined by, well, I maybe enjoy consuming this today, but I'm going to have this future harm. So an immediate consequence of rational addiction is that people are going to be forward-looking. They're going to think about the future, not just about the past, right? Because we think about addiction as saying, if you consume more in the past, that's going to affect me today. Well, a rational person is then going to have to say, if I consume more today, that's going to affect me in the future. So a key implication of rational addiction is that you're going to take account of those future effects. That's not going to be sufficient. That's what I'm going to, I'm going to show you why in a minute. Okay. 